Now on Radio 4 at 2 minutes past 3, we come to Afternoon Theatre. Solo Boy by Hugh Jenkins A Sunday in May 1924 A church in a London suburb Business this. Me up here singing to a god I don't believe in. And all them down there got up in their Sunday best for him. Look at them. Do they believe it? Don't even know if mum and dad really believe. Wish they won't go in. No, I don't. I'll be free. Mum looks lovely. Ramsgate. That's her idea. Dad doesn't want to really go, but she gets away in the end. I'll be alright, I suppose. Staying here with the Watsons. Until you matriculate, Paul. <laughs> That's a laugh. Look at old man Watson with his Bible. They've all got religion. Even Sylvia. She's nice. A bit soppy. Not daft though. Pretty. Yep. And she likes me. I dare say she'd let me. Oh no. That's the way they get you trapped. I'm fed up with all this singing. Whoops. Oh no, you don't, Pricey. You don't drown me. Quarter. I need the money. I'm glad you're leaving your lad in London for a while, Mrs. Davis. We should be sorry to lose him from the choir while he's in such good voice. Uh, Ramsgate, you're going, isn't it? That's right. Uh, when are you off? Tomorrow. Mm. Um, we're sorry to be going in a way, Mr. Sanford, but it's time Mr. Davis took things easier. For years now, he's been up doing his milk round, getting up at four every morning. Oh, three rounds a day, seven days a week. And Paul will be in good hands with the Watsons. Oh, we'll take care of him all right. Don't you worry about that. I'm sure you will, Mrs. Watson. <laughs> And you'll be glad of the young man's company, I expect, Sylvia. <laughs> yeah, he's bound to feel a bit miserable at first, but I'm sure he'll settle in with us quickly enough. Oh, no. In any case, we're buying a motor car. 
so we'll be driving up to see you all again before long. Oh, a motor car, eh? And what does Mrs Davies say to that? Oh, why not? <laughs> we sold the business well. The house in Ramsgate is large enough to do a bit of vetting in the summer, so we ought to be able to manage comfortably. I saw a second-hand Ford when we were down there last week. The old brass radiator type going cheap. I put a £5 deposit down to hold it. Oh, oh, you'll have to take us all out for a spin when you come up. Oh, yes. of course. <laughs> Particularly as you're being so kind about Paul. Oh, that's all right. Where the deuce is the boy? Uh, I left him in the choir room, waiting to have a word with the choir master. <clears throat> I think Paul has a little uh, financial matter to discuss with Mr Price. Uh, yeah, as treasurer of the church, I'm happy to say we can manage these little rewards. Ah, Paulie. You did well, my boy. What are you waiting for? Sir, I kept a list of the solos I've sung, and when I usually get paid for them, and it's melting up, sir. Must we? Oh, well, how much is it? Three pounds, seventeen and six, sir. <laughs> Three pounds? We can't pay you boys that sort of money. That's a man's way. I've sung a lot of solos, sir. I've only put down the usual money for each one. No, it's altogether too much. You'll get something, of course, but three pounds? Oh, no, no, no. But, sir, I... Now, see me after practice tomorrow. Uh, but, sir... Off you go now. Say goodbye to your parents for oh. me. Dad, Mum, he's going to cheat me. He won't pay properly. Silence. Be quiet, Paul. On the Sabbath and here of all places. But, Dad, Quiet, he... I say. Now, don't be silly, Paul. Uh, calm down and tell us quietly. Mum, he's not going to pay me while I've earned for solos. Oh, you don't sing in the house of the Lord for money, Paul. Oh, here, no more of this. Go home. Go home at once. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr Sanford, that my son has not learned to conduct himself properly in these precincts. <laughs> Never mind, Paul. I'll have a word with Mr Price. See what I can do. I'm sure it can all be settled satisfactorily. Thank you, Mr. Sanford. <laughs> it's only what I'm owed, sir. Paul? Sylvia, uh, why don't you and Paul go on ahead? We'll follow on with your parents. Yes, take him away, Sylvia. We'll catch you up. All right. <laughs> Come on, Paul. Come and tell me all about it. <laughs> it's not right, Sil. There ought to be a proper scale of payments. The solo boys ought not to have to rely on old Pricey to pay if he likes, what he likes, when he likes. He doesn't have to pay it out of his own pocket, does he? Of course not. He gets it back from old Sandy, the treasurer. But Pricey's against paying us anyway. He thinks no one should be paid but him and the occasional pro. Pro? Visiting professional singer. It's not fair. Paul? Yes? Is the money all that important? Don't you like singing? You have a wonderful voice and you know how to sing. It's lovely to hear you. Don't you enjoy it yourself? I don't enjoy it like I enjoy listening when I'm not singing. When you're singing, you can't listen in the same way. But I do like singing. I like the feeling of, of doing it well. I like it when people praise me. But it can get nasty. Soon after I became a solo boy, I won a competition at an I Stedford, and some people were really horrible. It was terrible. I hate competitions. I don't like grown-ups. I don't want to be like them. Most of them are silly, and they're only out for themselves. Aren't you only out for yourself? You're always on about that money. Well, I could do with it. I've got my eye on a second-hand bike. I want to ride over to Wembley and go to the British Empire Exhibition. I never have any money, but most of all, I hate being cheated. I won't have it. Besides, Sil, I'm not only out for myself. I'm out for the others, too. I want my money, but I also want a scale, an agreement, so all the boys get paid and paid the same for the same solos. I'm not sure you're right, Paul, but right or not, you can count on me. I'm with you. Oh, thanks, Sil. Now, be good, Paul. We'll see you soon, either here or in Ramsgate. All right, Mum. Look after Paul for us, Sylvia. Yes, Mr Davies. And, Paul, stop arguing about that money. Take what you're given. Understand? We'll miss you, Dad. I'll miss this place. And I won't be here to keep you in order, you young rascal. <laughs> You'll have to watch him, Sylvia. 
All aboard! Oh, well, thank your mother and father again for us, Sylvia. Be good, Paul. Study hard. Bye, Pass darling. That exam. Bye, Dad. Bye, Mr. Davis. Bye, Mrs. Mom. Davis. I'm free! I'm free! Be quiet, Paul. You're not free. No one is free. I'm free enough. You'll see. I'm free enough to get that money from old Pricey for a start. Oh, Sandy. Uh, can you wait a few minutes? I just want to run this through with young Paulie. Oh, I should be delighted. All right, Paulie. We'll do the first verse straight through. Yes, Mr. Price. twice doesn't make it true. I don't know he liveth. I wish I did. I think I wish I did. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I want to know. That was good, lad. Now, let's have it just like that on Sunday. Sir? Hmm? About the money, sir. Oh. Three pounds, seventeen shillings and sixpence. You sir, like... No, no, no. I told you before. It's far too much. Here's a pound. Now, off with you and consider yourself lucky. When shall I get the rest, sir? There is no rest, Paul. Cut price for quantity. Off you go. I'm only charging the right money, sir. Oh, look. Here's another half sovereign. You're a lucky boy. Who knows, when your voice breaks, you may have a singing career before you're now off with you. Uh, I'll be with you in a moment, Sandy. Oh, that's all right. Mr. Sanford, it's not fair if I don't get the right money. I brought a book for you, Paul, and uh, it's a little extra. No. Thanks for the book, Mr. Sanford, but I can't take your money. I want to be paid properly. Very well, Paul. Mr. Price and I will have a word about it. Ready, Sandy? Bye-bye, Paul. Coming. Coming. Thirty shillings. That's two pounds, seven and six he still owes me. What is this? King Solomon's Mines, Ryder Haggard. To P. Davis, from one of the congregation who be helped to worship. Whitson, 1924. Help to worship? Did I? All of them? 
Anyway, I'm sick of it. Nothing but choir practice and church. No good at football. No time for it. It's all singing. The price is a swindler. I'll get that money. It belongs to me. They're hypocrites. That's what they are. Hypocrites. I understand how you feel, Norman, but I think we must pay the boy the money he has earned. He has earned nothing. I teach those boys how to read music, how to sing. To get that tuition privately would cost a fortune. Mm. If we institute payment for every solo, before long we would find ourselves faced with a demand for payment from the whole choir. Certainly the boys, every time they sang in church, perhaps even for practice as well. Mm. Singing in the choir is not a job any more than coming to church is a job. I should like to be rid of the whole idea of solo money, but as you well know, it was established long before I came here. Just so, just so, Norman. We cannot simply abolish solo money after all this time. Mm. And if we pay, we must pay you equitably. We cannot pay on one occasion and not on another. Oh, yeah, no, no, Norman, forgive me, but cut price for quantity just won't wash it, cannot be defended. Good morning, hmm? Mr. Jackson. Mr. Price. Oh, uh, morning, morning, Mrs. Jackson. <laughs> Now, I will not establish any kind of agreement. I must retain the right to reward a boy or not, according to my judgment of his performance and ability. If I can't be rid of payments altogether, I must at least be allowed to decide who gets them and how much. Very well. Very well. But I think, on reflection, you will agree that once a boy has received a certain amount for a particular solo, he will expect to receive that sum whenever he sings the same piece again. After all, we pay our guest singers. <laughs> They are professionals. It's a very different kettle of fish. The boys come to us to learn and to serve, not to earn. But you yourself are not a professional, in oh. the sense of a full-time musician. And yet you are kind enough to accept our small honorarium in recognition of your invaluable services. Mm. No, 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 no. I really think we must pay this boy, Norman. I am a teacher. I get paid for that. They are pupils. They do not. If I may suggest, a solo boy is a little more than a pupil. He contributes personally and individually to the service. Well, none of us can do without him. Sandy, you're beginning to exasperate me. A solo boy and your precious Paul Davis is just one of them, and a cocky little devil at that for all his politeness. A solo boy does what I have trained him to do, just like the choir as a whole. I will not have any agreement. <sighs> I understand how you feel, Norman, but we must not be unreasonable. I have the feeling that young Paul is up to something. Each with his body lost, a squatting on his ass. <laughs> 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 Where are the others? Joe Sanders, Jim Cartwright and Arnold Fraser are coming. The other two couldn't or wouldn't. <sighs> New boys. Lousy lot. Still, us five are the most important. We can do the trick. If we stick together, we can force old Pricey to pay us the proper money. Always. Where's the letter then? Seal's got it. She wrote a clean copy because her writing is better than mine. And when I take it along to Pricey, I'll be able to say I didn't write it myself. Clever stuff. Who did write it? We wrote it together. I'll read it when the others get here. You know, Bertie, they just use us. We help them to believe what can't be true by making it sound good. Suppose you just said it. My body be eaten by worms, but I turn up again in the flesh and have a look at gold almighty. What rot. We're putting some musical icing on that mouldy old cake. We're entitled to our 30 pieces of silver. You do not go on. Where does he get it all from, Sil? Out of books. He reads all the time. Takes no notice of anything or anyone. But listen to me, Paul. I still believe in God. Not in my head, perhaps, but, but in my heart somehow. And nothing you say will change that. Father, Son and Holy Ghost, eh? All three? The triune God. What about Mary? Oh, no. That would make you Catholic, wouldn't it? A Romany? Oh, that would never do. Don't you sneer at me, Paul Davis, or I'll tear your rotten letter up. I'm sorry, Seal. I didn't mean to be sarky. Not half you didn't. Come off it, you two. All right. 
But don't you sneer at me again, Paul. Not about religion. I don't know all the details, but there's something in it. I'm sure of that. Hey, here come the others at last. Well, there you are. We've been over the other side of the hill. I said near the shelter. Look at those clouds. I just don't know what, what it's all about. Told you, Soppy. We're going to get proper pay for solos out of old pricing. What's all this about a letter? Sit down oh, and seal the room. We, the undersigned solo boys in the choir. We, the undersigned, eh? <laughs> <laughs> all push and legal. Shut up, Joe. Solo boys in the choir. Respectfully request that there will be an agreed scale of payments for solos and that you will kindly talk. <laughs> will kindly talk to Paul Davies, who we have chosen as our speaker. Yours respectfully. Shut up! Is it okay? Bertie? Arnold? Okay with me. I never chose you. You do it then. Not bloody likely. Alright. I'll sign. Got a pencil? No, has to be proper. Seal's got a fountain pen. Well, wait. Wait a minute. What's your green scale? I've, I've got it here. You're going to put the scale in with the letter? No. Too much of a shock for old Pricey all at once. <laughs> He'd go mad. No. Get him to agree to talk. Then the list. Well, then he'd like old Sandy be there and he'll help. He'd call old Pricey off a bit. Here, Bertie, you read it. Rejoice greatly. Half a crown. What? Oh, cool. Gave me a bug when I did it. I know that my redeemer live here. Five shillings. What? Oh, that's that's a bit steep. He'd knock us down anyway. Hear my prayer. Ten bob. Well, wow. oh. it's raining. Coming down in buckets. Oh. Run for the shelter. Oh, I'm going to the west side. Run! Look at soaked. Wow, raining! play that jazz stuff as well. <laughs> uh, I could earn more playing in a band than I get here, but I've no time for both. For good or ill, I'm a spare time choir master, and so I suppose I will remain. It's your vocation, Norman. Oh, yeah, music is my vocation. Come in. Ah, young Davis. Come in, Polly. Mr. Sanford is here to see fair play. Yes, sir. But first, let's give him the number we're doing for the concert party. Hmm? But, but no, sir. no, no. Ready? What'll I do? little devil. Oh, now to business. Now, see here, young Davis. I've read your impertinent letter and I can tell you straight away nothing doing. Uh, it was not meant to be impertinent, sir. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was impertinent. You don't think. You don't think. Of course you don't think. Your manner is polite, but what you ask is impertinent and you ask it collectively. Listen to this, Sandy. Dear sir, 
We, the undersigned, solo boys in the choir, respectfully request that there will be an agreed scale of payments for solos and that you will kindly talk to Paul Davis, who we have chosen as our speaker. Yours respectfully. Speaker indeed. Well, Mr. Speaker, what have you to say for yourself? Uh, well, uh, sir, uh, uh, hmm? we, 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 uh... Come along, lad, get it off your chest. You've no need to be frightened of me. But I tell you, once and for all, no agreement, no scale of payments. Please, sir, would you say why not? No, I'll be damned if I will! Now, get out of here and make sure you're perfect on Love Divine. You'll get no practice with Mr. Lloyd-Jones. I should get ten shillings for the duet with Mr. Lloyd-Jones, Ten sir. shillings be damned! Now, wait till you grow up. Lloyd-Jones is costing us three pounds, believe it or not. And that is quite enough to pay. Then I should get fifteen shillings at least. Ouch! Just a moment, Norman. Now, sit down, Paul. <laughs> Norman, I'm sure you will agree that we should tell Paul what we have decided. Oh, very well. Go ahead. Let's be done with it. Now, Paul, we've thought it over. And we think you have some cause for complaint. Not that we will agree a scale, for mm. one boy is not another. Right. All the same, you have received less than you have before for the same solos. We will put that right. We will pay your full demand for the past. We will not pay you any less in future. And we will pay ten shillings for love divine. <laughs> but we will have no scale. No agreement. An honorarium, yes. A voluntary monetary acknowledgement, shall we say, of special work in the Lord's service. That, yes. But an agreement, no. Sir? Yes, Paul? Sir, could the uh, uh, monetary acknowledgement be the same for all the solo boys? Damn it, boy! Young Jordan cannot sing like you. Your collaborator, fellow conspirator, Payne, cannot sing like you. I have invested hours of my life and all my skill in your voice, and I am not going to pay the same rate for those inferior noises as I will reluctantly pay for you. You must see, Paul, that Mr. Price is right. Why should we pay the beginner the same as the senior solo boy? But, sir, if he's good enough to sing solo in church, he should be paid the proper money. The right amount according to the skill. I, I mean, the rate for the job. That's it! I knew it! A bloody trade unionist! Oh dear, oh dear. A trade union? We only want an agreed scale, sir. Uh, we will not come to any such agreement. Mr. Price and I are as one on this. You must accept that, Paul. We hope you'll think it over, sir. I suggest that you and your friends do that, Paul. Meanwhile, you can take your own money. We've agreed you're entitled to that. Now, you had one pound ten, and you're claiming three pounds seventeen and six. So you've got two pounds seven and six to come, right? Yes, sir, but taking this won't mean we've got to give up the scale, will it? <laughs> You have no scale, and there will be no scale. Can't you get that into your head, boy? Your taking the money will make no difference to that, Paul. Uh, here. Thank you, sir. I'll tell the boys what you say, sir. But we hope that you will think it over too, sir. <laughs> you don't give up easily, do you, Paul? I'm afraid I can hold out no hope that we shall change our minds. I don't think we should change our minds either, sir. Out, out with you! <laughs> I think you'd better go, Paul. Yes, sir. Morning, sir. Morning, Mr. Price. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. And ever mindful of the needs of others. Amen. 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 Thank you for your help, Paul. You shall say the grace for us tomorrow. <coughs> What's the subject of this meeting of yours tonight, Paul? Well, Mrs. Watson, it's just that uh, uh, a few of us, uh, mm. solo boys, mm. have been talking about the money we get for solos. And uh, we've asked Pricey, uh, Mr. Price, to agree with us that, uh, to make it more fair. Oh. oh, what does Mr. Price say to that? 
Well, he doesn't really want to agree to anything. But Mr. Sanford persuaded him to pay me what I was asking, which was what I'd been paid before for the same solos. Oh, good. oh, then it appears you've won. So what's the purpose of this meeting? My dear, did you ask any of this when you agreed that these young gentlemen might gather here tonight? Well, no, dear. They want to meet, so what harm is there in that? Well, I don't know. I repeat, what's the meeting for, Paul? It's, uh, uh... Well, uh, I'm, uh... The boys asked for an agreement about money, and Paul has to tell them that Mr. Price won't have that. Oh, oh and then what? Well, we'll have to see what else we can do. Hmm. Very well, but listen, young man. I don't want anything planned in this house that your father would not approve of. Is that clear? Well, we won't ask for anything that's not fair. <laughs> ah, well, boys will be boys, I suppose. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> I think you should stand up for your rights. But be careful. Sometimes it's not a question of right and wrong, but a conflict of rights. Now remember, your father thinks your solo money is not a right, but a sort of bonus. Ah, deucerous as I think the French have it. I'm not sure that's quite right, dear. No, it's not. A anyway, when we've finished our meal, we'll move into the other room, and you can have your meeting in here, Paul. Is that all right, dear? Thank you, Mrs. Watson. Mm. Shut up! Yeah. Shut up and listen a minute. Now, let's go over it again. I'll see Pricey after practice. He'll tell me again. No skill, no agreement. The only thing I can say then is, OK, no skill, no solos. If I say anything else, we've lost. Told you before, Paul. You can't say that for me. My dad will kill me. Same goes for me. It's all very well for you, Paul. You're the dad's miles away. Got no dad, so you can speak for me. To all. Sorry, Paul. You won't be able to do it if your dad was singing in the choir like my old man. Oh, well. It was a good idea. I know. I'll bluff him into it. Huh? Huh? If I say, no skill, no solos, he won't know it's a bluff. Bet he'd find out. You won't win, Paul. Why try, Paul? Why bother? Forget it. No! I must have a go. What's right is right. I must try. All right, Paul, you stay behind. You want a word with me, and I want to run over Love Divine with you. Yes, sir. Now, you have made it abundantly clear what you're after, young Paulie, but you are not going to get it. This is the last time we're going to discuss the matter. There will be no scale, no agreement. And that is that. The, the boys want to scale, sir. I dare say they do. Because you put them up to it, didn't you? But once and for all, there will be no scale, no agreement. Have you got it? Yes, sir. Hmm. But in that case, sir, no solos and no duets either. You little swine! Ow! A swine, is it? Let I'll go. teach you who strikes Let go here. Me. Ow! You shouldn't have done that, sir. Yeah. Well, I've done it, my boy, and I'll do it again if I have any more of this bloody nonsense. You can't force us to Oh, say yes, it. I bloody can, and oh. I bloody will. Oh, no, no, you bloody won't. Don't you swear at me, you little swine. Right, I will Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> you are not leaving here, my lad, until I say so. Now shut up and listen to me. Come and sit down. Right. You will sing. You will all sing, and you, personally, will sing the duet Love Divine with Mr. Lloyd-Jones on Sunday. You will sing it perfectly, or I will break your neck for you, and I will send a telegram to your father. Telling him you've broken my neck, sir. Don't you be cheeky with me, lad. You will do as I say. Is that quite clear? Lost your tongue, have you? You heard me. Is that quite clear? I'm not afraid of you, but I don't want... I don't want other people, my father, involved in this. Yeah, because you know you're wrong. No, because I'm right, but he thinks I'm wrong. And he's my dad. So that's that. You win this time. There will be no other time. We'll see about that. I... <laughs> you're a cocky little devil, I'll give you that. But you'd better drop it. Any more of this, and your father hears of it at once, so let's forget it. 
and get to work. The boys won't like it. Oh, don't give me that. I know a ringleader when I see one. And I also know a lad who can sing. So let's hear from you, hmm? Now, the first few bars of Love Divine, unaccompanied. Let's hear your perfect pitch. Straight off, without a note. Away you go. One, two, three, four. Love divine, oh, all no. love's excelling. Joy. No, 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 no! Oh, damn parrot, haven't I told you? Listen to me, damn you. Love, not love. Whoever heard of love, you don't say love, do you? I sing it. And divine, D, D, D. You can't sing div. It's a horrible sound. Division, dividends. Listen, you are singing about love divine. Mean it. Love divine. And just a little emphasis, a tiny crescendo and diminuendo on the two syllables. Hmm? Love di. On and off quickly. Get it? Now, try again. Love divine. All love's excelling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Joy that's better, much better, not too much. Now, again with me, and this time right through. Love divine, all love's excelling. Joy over whom the souls come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling. All thy fates are matchless. Sorry, I couldn't get here in time for a run through with you, young man. Ready? Yes, Mr. Lloyd Jones. I think. What on earth is all this about? Does God love us? It's a funny way of showing it. Does it even exist? I don't know. I only know I can't believe it the way they all seem to believe it. But what I do know is that when people sing solos in church, they should be properly paid for them. Oh Lord, it's so loud. We should have had a run through. Help! I've lost it! I can't stay here. I can't do it. I won't do it. It's my chance. Now or never. you run out of the church, Paul? I don't know, sir. Really. First I lost my place, then I tried to get back, and my voice seemed to break. And then suddenly it seemed to be my chance. I just had to go. You are sure you didn't really mean to make a mess of it all the time? No. But I knew I had to get out. I saw my chance. I've written to Mum and Dad. Listen. Dear Mum and Dad, I'm writing to tell you that my voice broke in the middle of the duet with Roy Jones. I was so upset that I ran out of the church. But I'm quite all right now. I'm very sorry. Your loving son, Paul. Has your voice really broken? I think it began to break in church, and now it's nearly gone. But I still have some trouble left. Listen. I'm finished with it anyway, Sue. I'm not going to be a solo boy anymore. But I'll tell you one thing. 
I really enjoyed that row with old Pricey. You know me. I'm a scaredy cat, really. Frightened of being hurt. I hate boxing. Wish cricket balls were softer. But I told Pricey I wasn't afraid of him, and I was telling the truth. Perhaps it was because I was trying to get something not just for myself. Oh, Pricey called me a bloody trade unionist. I must find out more about that. Anyway, I found out one thing. If you really don't want to do something, no one can make you. Soon I'll be a man, and no one will ever be able to order me about. You talk too much, Paul. You'll see. You'll get ordered about. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. But you, Sue? You could order me about any time. And you, me, Paul. <laughs> could I really? I say, uh, Sylvia? In Solo Boy by Hugh Jenkins, the part of Paul was played by Paul Russell and sung by Benjamin Revel. Sylvia was played by Eva Griffith, Mr. Price by Geoffrey Collins, and Mr. Sanford by Alan Dudley. Mr. Davis was David Peart, Mrs. Davis, Jane Wenham, Mr. Watson, Eric Allen, Mrs. Watson, Maddie Head, Bertie, Charles Barnum, Jim Robert Tappin, Joe Aaron Sevitt, and Arnold Marvin Charlton. Mr. Lloyd Jones was played and sung by Alan Green. The choir was conducted by Barry Rose, who also played the organ and piano. Solo Boy was directed by Glyn Dearman.